Today I'm at Water's Edge, and I'm interested in exploring our changing planet. And I'm really interested in exploring how water, land, soil, atmosphere are connected and affect that change and are affected by that change, and then bring in additional complexity of the fish and the birds and the plants that reside within those systems and how they're affected by the changing planet and how they also affect our changing planet. I'm here with PNL soil scientist Vanessa Bailey. So Vanessa, here we are standing at a uh, in a water system, terrestrial aquatic system. Can you tell me what is it about these interfaces, the land water interface, that's so critical today? Well, these are the the traditional places where we've studied water and traditional places where we've studied land, but this is where they connect. And this is a really dynamic interface where when water levels rise, whether it's through sea level or tides or storm surges, they now interact with the land. And we've traditionally considered this land-water connection as just an exchange, that something goes from land to water or something goes from water to land. But we now know that there's a lot more going on, that there's transformations and dynamics and processes that we don't currently capture in our best uh, predictive models. Okay. so. Uh, so as, as I understand it, in my words, we sort of treat the, the water as a silo and the land as a silo and there's very few connections. Exactly. And yet scientifically they're, they're intimately connected with Absolutely. water flow, nutrient flow, all of those sorts of things. And they're impacted by the atmosphere and climate mm -hmm. and they feed back on each other. So I think we all know or acknowledge that the climate is changing and, and that our, our planet is undergoing change. Why uh, are coastal systems or these, these types of systems so important now? Well, first and foremost, this is where people live. The mm -hmm. vast majority of people live along a terrestrial aquatic interface and in the coastal systems in particular where we're seeing repeated storm events, storms are getting much larger in magnitude and they're coming more frequently. And so these are systems that are bearing the brunt of those storms and we don't know when those systems are going to continue to buffer and stave off um, the effects of a storm or if they're gonna start to fail in response to storms and if, they, if the storms come too quickly it's going to be harder on the system to recover. So the challenge is how do they withstand the storm and how do they recover from the storm. But this is also where human infrastructure is too. Bridges, energy systems. Security. Security. Our bases yep. and things like that. Absolutely. So. And in thinking about uh, the science of these systems you know, there's biology, we see plants in the water, there's probably microbial systems, there's fish doing mm -hmm. their thing. What is the, the big challenge, sort of in a nutshell, in understanding these systems? Connecting them all. Connecting them all, so okay. So again, we talked about water and we talked about land, we didn't even mention plants and trees and grasses and all of the connections through them. So being able to understand how carbon comes in through a plant, through photosynthesis, and moves through the system, transforms, gets into the water, but then comes back through things that are deposited on land. Just making all of those connections across scales where the microbes behave up to the forest. And what do we do with all that understanding and data? Does it go to the community? Does it go into models? Uh, what is it that we do with that? In the biggest vision, it goes both places. Okay. So we use these data and we use these experiments to understand <clears throat> conceptually how systems behave, but ultimately we want to use these in, in local, regional, and earth system models to predict the behavior of the planet. But also we want at PNNL to extend all of this data in a way that brings the community together so they're enriching what we do and we in expand what they can do. Okay, well, so if, the, if these systems are where people live and we have our you know, naval bases and our energy infrastructure, you know, why now? Why are we studying these systems now? Why didn't we do that a long time ago? Because, quite honestly, they're hard. Right? Okay. We've, it's been very not easy, <clears throat> but putting boxes around things like here's the water experiment, here's the forest experiment, here's the soil experiment, has made things much more tractable. Mm -hmm. But bridging these things, like talking about experiments that include land and water, has required a lot more computational power. It's required okay. new experimental techniques. And in fact, a lot of the research PNNL has done in the past has brought us to a place now where we have the technical capabilities and the computational capabilities to bring these systems together. Okay. I'm a soil scientist. Yes. And so soils and lands really depend on water dynamics. So we don't grow food without water coming in in a predictable fashion. So when we start looking at that balance getting out of whack, and things that happen at river margins and coastal margins like this, there's a lot of 
biogeochemical transformations and, and processes that happen at these interfaces, that being able to understand them here allows us to understand soil and the earth system more broadly. What brought your interest into soil science and ultimately understanding these, uh, these complex systems? Having spent a lot of my time growing up on a farm, I spent a lot of time following little sloughs and falling into them and seeing that the mud that came up mm -hmm. looked different from the soil that was up top. So I So from early on dirt. you were just playing in the playing, playing in, the, in the mud and playing <laughs> in the dirt. So okay, thank you. Thank you. What I heard Vanessa say is that the systems of our planet, water, land, soil, atmosphere, are connected and that those connections are uh, not well understood. I also learned that the time is now for studying those. We now have the computational power to do it. We have the, the methods to take the measurements that we need to make. And so now is the right time to start to understand how these systems uh, interact with each other. So my question to you is, whether you study biology or chemistry or physics or math or computer science, what part of these systems are you interested in and what are you studying and how do you see these connections coming together to help us further understand our changing planet?